for a right trapezoid three versions so you should know what it looks like right it's kind of it looks like that so you can you can already go ahead and make three versions of that It don't look pretty, but it'll do the trick for now. <clears throat> Can you make three of these? I'm not sure if you have enough for this one, to be honest. This is probably the one exception, but one of them would be that you have uh, the two 90 degree angles. That's one property. Okay, And then another one would be that this line is parallel to that line. You like this is it for this one this is only the only one because it doesn't have much else um, yeah we'll just leave it there okay so all, all that work for nothing so let's do a parallelogram parallelograms are slanted rectangles so you can already go ahead and there I, I'm very very confident that we have enough to make even more than just three versions. Okay. Colton, do you mind turning off the front lights for us? There we go. The front lights. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. So one property would be, hey, it's got two pairs of parallel sides. Boom. That's one mark right there. And then another one could be, if you wanted to, is it's going to be a bit busy, but watch this. You're going to say this side measures the same as that side. And this side has the same length as that side. So two pairs of parallel sides and two uh, pairs of parallel um, congruent sides, sorry. And so you can actually write that if you want. If you just want to write, you don't have to actually put the markings on there. Uh, what else can we say? We can say that the diagonals, so if you draw your diagonals inside, we know that they cut each other in half. So this one is the same, measures the same as that, right? It's cut in half. And this long diagonal is also cut in half. So that would be one property that diagonals bisect. And if you wanted to, for the second property, you could just say, hey, I know that it's got two pairs, pairs of parallel sides. That would be good as well. Okay. And uh, another uh, version of this, I don't know if I, I told you this one. Let me see. No, I'm, I'm, I didn't tell you about it, but this angle here is the same as that one up there. And this one is the same as, measures the same as that one there. I don't know if you would, uh, if you would remember that from younger grades, but that's also true. And then one more property would be, hey, this is the same as that. And this measures the same as that. And then you're done. Okay. You could have talked about, you know, diagonals and the fact that two pairs of sides are congruent. You could have done that as well. So that's kind of what I'm looking for here, that you, you start, you, you know, just practice your, your labeling, practice, like see if you even know properties about that shape. And then so one more one more page on 29, try a few more, and you can always go back and peek, right? All right. So sketch a kite, label two properties. I'm gonna do this at the back. A kite should look like this, where the bottom is a little bit longer than the top. So maybe one of the properties that I would identify is, right, the fact that the diagonals meet at a 90, 
and maybe my second property is going to be right indicating the sides that are congruent that would be a mark zoom into that sorry two marks for that one uh, maybe I'll give you another version here if you wanted to say that the short diagonal bisects and that these angles here are congruent that is also correct Oof, what's there what's happening there okay or what else can we say uh, or what what other combination you could have used right the fact that right they meet at a 90 and that these angles are the same right so you you decide what you want to do there but two marks if you have two different things uh identified question two uh, it's asking for a rhombus so a rhombus is basically a slanted square and it doesn't have to be drawn to scale right so one of the properties is all sides are the same and another property would be that the uh, diagonals meet at a 90. I don't know if you have that. Or, right, you might want to say that this, these two are parallel, these two are parallel, that would be one property. And then uh, maybe indicating that they bisect, right? So one, one, and then two, two. That would also be acceptable anybody else wondering you could just talk about the side that these are parallel you could also say that this angle is the same as that one and this one yeah yeah so two marks two marks right three what is it asking there Isosceles trapezoid. So isosceles trapezoid is looks like this. Okay, so uh, that would be one property. The fact that maybe this angle is the same as that one, and this one is the same as that one, that would be two marks. Or You could say that these are parallel and that the diagonals are congruent how would you show that because they don't bisect i would just say diagonals are congruent just to make sure you you, you mentioned that anything else so any combination uh oh you could have mentioned that these two sides are the same. I forgot about that. So that, that's another thing. If you mentioned that, you'd get two marks. You don't get three marks if you did three. It's good. It's not, you're allowed to do that, but you don't get bonus marks. Four, what is it asking for there? Classify the following triangles. So I'm going to do that here. Classify the following triangles. So if if this if these two sides are the same then so are the angles across those two sides so if this is 25 and that's 25 that's 50 it turns out that this is 130 okay so this would be an obtuse isosceles you get two marks for that what if i do my zoom I, I, I'll be okay today. I trust you, but on a test, maybe, or moving forward, just write it in there. Um, and then this one, three sides is not good enough to classify as is. You can say scalene, that you can say, but we don't know about this part. And uh, you probably did this on the back side, but oh, this is going to be very tight here. I'm going to try it. I'm going to go for it. So that's 5 squared plus 4 squared minus 8 squared. 
and 2 times 5 times 4. I bet you that's a negative, right? So that's 25 and 16 minus 64. So that's negative 23. Oops, I'm off script there. And that's 2 times 5 is 10 times 4 is 40. I'm okay in this unit if you just stop there because I'm not asking you specifically. But if you just say that, right, and then just obtuse. I would say for this one, yes. Yeah. If you didn't do any work, I would say one out of two. Because then it's, because it does look obtuse, but in all the tests, on the test, I will, like, if there are numbers, calculate. On the test, I'll probably make it look like it looks like a 90. You know what I mean? So you're going to have to, this was my best attempt freehanded, right? So, um, let's, we'll get there in a bit. Okay, we'll get there. Uh, let's do true and false, and then we'll do the fifth one. A rectangle has diagonals that are congruent. True. The diagonals in a kite bisect each other. False. No, but you said. Only the short one. The each other is what, yeah. A parallelogram can also be a square. Yes. All squares are parallel parallelograms, and that's true. Well, uh, think. Remember when I said, like, when you go from specific to general, when you go up, it's always true. The other way is not always true. Uh, a rhombus has four congruent angles. False, because it's a slanted square. Right, it's a slanted. Not all of them are the same. It, it has two acute and two obtuse angles. Um, so one mark for each, by the way. So we are out of five there. I'll do the total at the end. So let's go to the sketch the right isosceles. So you could have done it like this if you wanted to. Or you give me the 90 and you, you tell me that the other two sides are the same. You cannot say that the side across the 90 is the same as another side. Because there's only one, one longest side, right? So it's the other two. So if you sketched it like this, that's fine as well. So be two marks for indicating, right, the 90 and the markings. Or... You could have said nine inches, nine inches, that's fine as well. All right, so uh, let's see here. Two, four, six, eight. Eight and five would be 13. And then 13 plus two is 15 plus another two is 17. So we have the total is 17. Two, four, six, right? And we have eight, 10. We didn't do this one. So 10 and five is 15, right? And then I added the two marker in the back instead of this one. So it's 17. And now the bonus, okay. What did you get? I'm gonna have to calculate. What? He asked and I said, sure. Would you have would you have done it? Oh, you did this one? So yeah, you get I'll give you bonus marks. Two two marks. Okay, you too, all right. And Eric. Okay, so let me just quickly, the way you found this is you subtracted these, right? 18 minus 12 to get six. And then Pythagorean theorem for height, 
would be 8 squared minus 6 squared. That's 64 minus 36. Take the root of that. 5.29, you're good. Yeah, that's your height. So that's one mark for that. Yeah, yeah, one mark for height and one mark for area I'm going to give you today. So that's the height. That's all right. To get the area of a trapezoid, it's, it's adding these two up. Make sure you do that in brackets. Then you multiply it by the height. And then you divide that whole thing in half. Oh, that work. That should work too. So yeah, seventy nine thirty five. Just one, yeah. One bonus mark. So you can potentially you get one bonus mark for the height and one bonus mark for the area, but you have to show work. You can't just copy it down now. And... Look, I got two.